I'm working on an Elkhead hat rack, edition of 50. Uh, rough measurements, 16 by 25, I would say. 6 by 6, bugling elk. Where do you get your reference from? I live in elk country. That helps. Um, I have some neighbors that have an elk ranch around where I live. That helps. And, uh, you know, the, it's that kind of time of season right now. To They're all in velvet fixing to start rubbing around they're already starting i've been seeing a lot of rubs up in the mountains already so they're already starting to shed their velvet and mm -hmm. uh, this will be uh, i've done several elk before they were all sold out um, never in a hat rack form but uh full-bodied elk and how big a hat can you put on that rack some barrel size i'd say <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's going to be able to, each hat rack I've, I've uh, completed throughout the series has slowly gotten to where you can fit a larger hat on them. Um, there used to not be very many hats out there over a four inch brim and now, you know, five inch brim is pretty regular. So what type of subject matters do you enjoy sculpting? All things Western, but uh, the equine figure and the human figure are my favorites by far. Well, my goals are lawfully the expectations of what we're supposed to keep up with in our road schedule and family life always dwindles me down to a realistic, you know, five to eight a year. That's not bad, though. Yeah, I would like to be doing more like 10 to 15 a year, but whenever I graduated college, this question was asked by my professor and I told him I was going to do this, you know, I'm going to take a couple of weeks off and do 50 new pieces a year. <laughs> Yeah, that brought some good laughter in class. <laughs> when you were in school, did you always think you wanted to be a sculptor? I was lucky enough to be an art teacher's son. So um, I, I really thought I was going to probably end up teaching art somewhere. It was going to be a part of my life no matter what, I, what occupation I ended up grabbing a hold of. But uh, I always knew I was going to do art. I didn't know I was going to be a sculptor, not until I stuck my hands in the clay in like 98, 96 maybe, uh, was the first time I in college. And I knew immediately, as soon as I touched it, that this was going to be a part of my life forever. Do you have any like big piece in your head that you want to accomplish before you retire in your sculpting career? Well, hopefully in the next year or two, I, I uh, bring across uh, trying to collect a buck, which is a bronc piece of mine that uh, has a, a really cool profile to it. It's uh, got a cool silhouette from every direction, and it's a piece that's meant to go large. There's a lot of air underneath it, and it's a, it's a fun little mind trick to play on people with that piece. The counterbalance, how it's elevated and... and uh, It'll probably take some internal engineering to do that piece large, but it's all capable these days. It's all possible. Do you use a, a lot of technology at all with your work, or are you pretty much old school the way you go about doing things? Pretty much old school. I will measure bones. Uh, for this piece, I measured a, a skeletal structure of the head of an elk, and went off of that for my scaling up and down. When I first started, I just, it was totally, I guessed on everything I did. And it was a, you know, it was a natural eye that, that I was lucky to have. Um, as I matured in my process, I really wanted to be able to say, this is a quarter life. This is one third life. This is, you know, one seventh life. And that gave other people a, a more, you know, round idea of what this was in the round for size whenever they're looking at a two-dimensional photo or a screenshot or whatever it's uh, hard to think of how it is in a round so scale helps true scale helps so I've started incorporating that in the last several years